What if you were fighting a war that ended 30 years ago? Sounds impossible, right? Not for Hiru Onoda. Let's wind the clock back to World War II. Picture a young, dedicated intelligence officer in the Imperial Japanese Army named Hiru Onoda. His training was meticulous, focusing on guerrilla warfare, the art of fighting by staying hidden, striking swiftly, and melting back into the shadows. In December of 1944, Onoda was deployed to Lubang Island in the Philippines. His mission? To do as much damage to the enemy as possible, disrupting their operations and surviving in the unforgiving jungle. The words of his superiors echoed in his mind, Onoda, do not surrender, do not take your own life. These orders, while clear and uncomplicated, carried an unimaginable weight. Onoda could never have predicted how these words would shape, not just his military career, but the next 30 years of his life. As World War II ended in 1945, Onoda, hidden in the dense jungles of Lubang Island had no idea. For him, the battle was still raging. He was a part of a small band of soldiers who had been given orders to disrupt and sabotage enemy efforts at all costs. They were the hidden warriors of the Imperial Japanese Army, carrying out guerrilla activities against the locals, the remnants of a war that had formally ended. Onoda and his team didn't just survive in the jungle, they made it their fortress. They lived off the land, using their training to stay hidden, to stay alive, and most importantly, to keep fighting. They were soldiers, and their mission, their duty, was clear. The war was not over until they were told so. As the years rolled on, their numbers dwindled. One by one Onoda's comrades fell. Some lost their lives to the unforgiving jungle, others to skirmishes with local police and Philippine army searching for these ghosts of a war long past, and some losing hope chose to surrender, to lay down their arms and accept a reality they could no longer deny. By 1972, Onoda was alone. His comrades, the men he had fought alongside, the men he had shared this unending battle with were all gone. But Onoda did not falter, he did not waver, he was a soldier, and he had his orders. Even as the world outside moved on, as the reality of peace became undeniable, Onoda remained steadfast. The jungle was his world, the war his reality. He had been trained to survive, trained to fight, and that's exactly what he did. Alone in the jungle, Onoda continued his one-man war. For Onoda the war was far from over, he was a soldier and he had orders to follow. While Onoda fought his solitary war, the world moved on. As he kept vigil in the dense jungles of the Philippines, history continued to unfurl on the world stage, oblivious to his solitary struggle. As he held his ground, the Korean War ignited in 1950, a conflict that would last for three years and rattle the global community with its stark division of ideologies. The world watched as North and South Korea grappled with each other, the echoes of their conflict reaching even the remote corners of the world. In 1961 the human spirit soared as Yuri Gagarin, a Soviet astronaut, became the first man to orbit the Earth. The space race had begun, a testament to human ambition and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. And yet, Onoda remained unaware, his world confined to the dense foliage and wild creatures of the jungle. As the world celebrated the moon landing in 1969, a symbol of extraordinary human achievement, Onoda continued his lonely vigil. He was a world away from the cheering crowds and the triumphant astronauts, his reality defined by survival, not exploration. Meanwhile, efforts to inform Onoda of the war's end were relentless. Leaflets were dropped over the jungle, loudspeakers blared the news of Japan's surrender, but to no avail. Onoda dismissed these attempts as enemy tricks, a testament to his unwavering dedication to his mission and his profound mistrust of anything that suggested otherwise. As the Vietnam War raged from 1955 to 1975, Onoda remained isolated in the jungle, a war of one playing out against the backdrop of a world rapidly changing. The world moved on, but for Onoda, time seemed to stand still. Amidst the changing world, Onoda remained steadfast, a relic of a war long past. He was an embodiment of the past, a symbol of a bygone era, a man out of sync with the world, yet undeniably a part of its rich and complex history. Finally, in 1974, Onoda's war came to an end. His silent solitary battle was about to be silenced, not by gunshots or by the roar of bombs, but by words, words of peace, words of surrender. The catalyst for this change was Norio Suzuki, a young adventurer from Japan. Suzuki had embarked on an expedition, not for gold or glory, but to find Onoda, the soldier lost in time. 
He ventured into the dense jungles of the Philippines driven by a sense of curiosity and perhaps a spark of hope that he could bring a fellow countryman home. When Suzuki stumbled upon Onoda, it was not a joyous reunion. Onoda, ever the dutiful soldier, refused to surrender. His loyalty to his commander and his mission was unyielding. He insisted that he would only lay down his arms if he received orders from his former commander, Major Yoshimi Taniguchi. Imagine that, a soldier so committed to his duty that he would rather continue his solitary war than disobey an order given 30 years ago. It was a testament to Onoda's unwavering dedication, a dedication that was both awe-inspiring and heart-wrenching. As the news of Onoda's discovery reached Japan, it was met with a blend of disbelief and reverence, and thus, in a surreal twist of events, Major Taniguchi was flown to the Philippines. The man who had once commanded Onoda was now tasked with the mission to relieve him. The scene when Taniguchi met Onoda was charged with emotion. The once young and vibrant soldiers were now older, their faces etched with the lines of time. Taniguchi, in a voice heavy with emotion, read out the orders that officially ended Onoda's long, lonely war. Onoda surrendered, 29 years after the war had ended. He had been fighting a war that was over, living in a time that was gone. But his surrender was more than just a cessation of battle. It was a testament to the power of loyalty, the strength of conviction, and the indomitable spirit of one man against the relentless march of time. So what can we learn from Onoda's extraordinary story? Lieutenant Hiru Onoda's tale is a remarkable testament to human resilience and unwavering loyalty. His dedication to his mission, even in the face of decades of isolation and hardship, is nothing short of extraordinary. Yet it's also a poignant story of lost years. A man who spent the prime of his life fighting a war that had long since ended. Onoda's story is a mirror reflecting the broader historical context of the era. It underlines the significant impact of war, not just on the battlefield but also on the minds and lives of those who fight. It highlights the tragic consequence of misinformation and the power of belief, which can sometimes blur the line between reality and illusion. Onoda's story is a testament to the power of belief and the human will to survive, but it also serves as a stark reminder of the lasting impact of war, even long after the guns have fallen silent.